guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all really well and having a fabulous day today. In this video I thought I would share with you a kind of autumnal get ready with me. I didn't want to call it a makeup tutorial because I don't think of myself as a makeup artist or a pro at doing my makeup, so it's really just for you to see how I do my makeup on days when it's just a little bit more than an everyday makeup routine, so I wouldn't necessarily do my makeup like this every day, in fact I definitely wouldn't. It's more of a long-lasting, high coverage and just very wearable autumnal makeup look using a mixture of high street and high-end products. If you are new to my channel then hello, welcome and I would love it if you would subscribe for more beauty and fashion and travel lifestyle vlogs, tons and tons of videos. So if you enjoy this one and please do hit the subscribe button down below. Um, at the moment I'm doing Vlogtober so a video every single day whether that's a chatty video or a get ready with me or a shopping haul, there's a video every day so if you don't want to miss out then please do subscribe. So this video is going to start with the skincare that I used first thing this morning all the way through to this finished look. So without further ado, enjoy. I've already cleansed my face this morning and I used a new product, this is the Dr. Seba Rose de Vie Cream Cleanser and I really like the formula of this, I find it really gentle but also it feels like it's nice and nourishing on my skin which this time of year my skin absolutely loves and because it is a rose product I just absolutely love the scent of this so all I've done so far this morning is cleanse my skin. So the next part of my morning skincare routine in autumn is toning and I've been using the Fresh Peony Brightening Moisturising Facial Toner and usually I find toners can be a little bit stripping on the skin, a bit harsh but this one because it is so moisturising I find it a really really nice formula. So I just apply a little bit of this onto a cotton pad. I love that this is a brightening formula. I find that this time of year we just kind of need all the help we can get when it comes to adding a bit of brightness and luminosity to the skin. And then I'm going to be using the Amorovixa Omor Essence and I've really been getting into using essences recently. I just find this time of year anything that you can do to help your skin is a bonus. So I put a couple of drops of that onto my hands and just pat this onto my skin. It feels like water and it sinks in pretty much straight away and I've been told that essences help the rest of your skincare do its job so really like the idea of that. And then because I'm quite obsessed with my pores at the moment and I'm doing everything in my power to make them smaller, I've recently been trying the Clinique Pore Refining Solutions Correcting Serum and I haven't really been using this long enough to tell you whether it works or not but I am willing to be optimistic about it so just applied one pump of that and spreading it over my face just with my hands. And then it's eye cream. I'm aware there are so many steps in my kind of skincare when it comes to autumn, but I feel like you just need to help your skin combat the cold, dry weather in any way possible. And the eye cream that I'm using is from a company called Neostrata, and I picked this up in one of those French pharmacies. It was a Wigmore Street Pharmacy, and it has actually been doing a lot of good for my under eye circles, so I'm just patting this on and not too close to the actual eye, just kind of keeping to the bone area and just gently patting that in. So I'll usually leave this part of my skincare routine to kind of settle in for a couple of minutes while I go and put the kettle on, make myself a cup of tea, ready to moisturise and then start my makeup routine. So the moisturiser that I'm going to use today is the Estee Lauder Revitalising Supreme Plus Global Anti-Aging Moisturiser and this one is targeted for millennials, so 20-ish year olds, to really combat those first signs of ageing. I think prevention is better than cure is definitely what they're going for with this range and if I can do anything to stop my skin from aging then I'm going to give it a go and I also really like the consistency of this. It feels thick and it feels like it sinks in really quickly which I love because I don't want to be hanging around for ages waiting for my moisturiser to sink in. So I've really been enjoying using this one recently. It's got quite a nice smell to it as well. It's not a strong smell but it just feels nice and luxurious. By the way, I'm sorry for my hair this morning. I was having one of those really weird hair days where I don't really have a parting. It's like parting here and here. Don't know what's going on, so I've just scraped it all back. But I do usually just pile my hair in a bun when I'm doing my makeup anyway. So next is primer, and I'm using the Eve Lom Flawless Radiance Primer. This one I find gives a little bit of radiance to my skin, but without being too obvious, if that makes sense. It's just a very lovely natural radiance, which I really like because as someone with 
oily skin, I'm always quite aware of looking too dewy. So this one I find is the perfect balance for me. And I just spread this again with my fingers all over my face. And then before I get started on my actual makeup, I'm going to put on a little bit of lip balm because my lips do get a bit dry at this time of year. And I'm going to use the Giorgio Armani Lip Care. This one's a really lovely formula and slightly tinted. So just a really pretty colour for everyday wear, popping in your handbag, etc. Okay, and finally it is time to start my makeup. First of all, because I want to have quite a luminous base but not too dewy, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to use the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation, but I'm also going to blend it with a Vichy one for a little bit of extra coverage. So I'm just using one pump of the Giorgio Armani and popping that on my face. And then for the additional coverage and long wear, I'm using the Vichy Derma Blend Corrective Resurfacing 16 Hour Foundation. Once again, just squeezing a kind of two thirds of a pea sized amount onto my hands, and then once again, dotting this onto my face. And then I'm taking my Beauty Blender, which has swelled up big time because I rinsed it under the tap earlier, and I'm just going to dab it in, and the two foundations blend together really, really nicely. And then once I've got a perfect base from the foundation, I'm taking two different concealers to conceal. Because I want this look to be really long lasting, it's a Saturday morning and I definitely want this to last right throughout the day, I'm using the Kat Von D Lock It Concealer, and this is actually my first time using it, so I'm going to give this a try on my chin. I'm just going to press it on my chin, because that's an area where I find that my makeup doesn't tend to hang around too long, so I've just put a few uh, dots of that on my chin, patting it in with my fingers, and then hopefully my makeup won't be budging in that area. And then I'm going to be using the Too Faced Born This Way concealer, which is a little bit lighter, just to conceal and highlight on the rest of my face. And then I'm just using my Beauty Blender to blend that into my foundation. It's the exact same sponge that I used before, no point in changing halfway through. So now that I've finished all the, I like to call it the wet part of my base, I'm going to set all those products in place with a powder. And my favourite at the moment is the Shantakai HD powder. I've got the bronze colour, and this doesn't really add too much colour, but it really sets the makeup with a little bit of warmth, um, and it gives a bit of a blurring effect too, so I'm a big fan of this one. And I just wipe that pretty much all over my face, making sure to pay attention to my chin and under eyes as well. So as you can see, because this base is very full coverage, I have lost all sense of shadow and contour on my face. So now it is time to bring that back with some bronzer and contour. First of all, I'm going to bronze with my Hourglass Bronzing Powder in Ambient Bronze, Luminous Bronze Light. And I'm using a Sigma brush to do this, and I always start under the cheekbones because it just helps to build that natural contour. And if you have too much colour on your brush, it's very easily blendable in this area too. And then I bring it up over my forehead and under my chin where the face would naturally have a bit of shadow. And then when I finish those areas, whatever's left on my brush, I just use to naturally bronze the rest of my face. And I start to feel a little bit more human again at this stage. Next I'm going to do some really subtle contour and I'm going to be using another new favourite of mine. This is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette which looks like this and I'm going to be using these two shades on the end. I'm not going full on dark contour so I'm just swiping my brush and this is actually a Marc Jacobs blusher brush but I really like using this for contour. And then I'm going to practice where to put it by sucking my face in and then drawing like an L shape. So from here down to my mouth, forehead down to mouth. And then finally, softening by blending them all together using my bronzing brush once again. Okay, I've brought you in a little bit closer for brows, and this is the stage that makes me finally feel a bit more normal. And I'm using the Bobbi Brown Longwear Brow Gel. I'm going for really long wearing products today, um, because as I said, I'm gonna be out all day. And then I'm using my Zoeva Brow Brush. This one's got a really fine pointed end. And first of all, I'm just going to outline underneath where I want my brow to be. The whole time I'm just using really fine hair-like strokes just because I don't want this to be too bold. And then once I'm happy with the line underneath, I'm just going to slowly start feathering the brow cream through the brow to build in that volume. I always start with the 
Is it called the bulb area? I always start with the bulb area first, just because I actually lack hair in this area, so it's good to start building that up. I find that then using a powder product almost sets the brows in place and makes them look a bit more natural. And I found that one of the shades from the new Estee Lauder Sultry Nudes Palette is pretty much my perfect brow colour. So I'm using the same brush, um, I have wiped the excess off on my hand there, and then just lightly putting a little bit of this onto my brush and then running that through my brows. And then the final thing I'm going to do in the brow area is apply a little bit of Bobbi Brown's Creamy Concealer and I'm also using a smoky liner brush which is not what it's intended for. You can see I'm almost finished with this one. I'm just taking a small amount of this on both sides of the brush and I find it makes my brows look a lot more neat and polished if I just run a little bit of concealer underneath the brow arch. Next I'm going to do my eyeshadow and first of all I'm going to create a really lovely colour that's going to wash all across the base from the Sultry Nudes Estee Lauder palette and I'm going to use actually the same one that I used on my brows which is this lovely kind of mushroomy brown colour down here, tapping off the excess and then just wiping this all over the lids. It's quite a greyish brown which I really really like, such a gorgeous autumnal colour and I think a nice soft brown for blondes as well. So I've just put that on my lid and extending it just a little bit over the crease. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm taking a very warm kind of orangey brown which has got a little bit of shimmer in it, also from the Sultry Nudes and I'm actually going to focus this on the outer corner and then just gradually bring it in over the lid. I find this really adds a very nice, subtle warmth. It's not a majorly intense eye look, but I've just really been enjoying using this combination recently. And then before I do anything more, I'm going to use my Zoeva blending brush just to blend out those two colours. So if you wanted a more soft everyday look, you could definitely leave it here, but I'm actually obsessed with this almost coppery reddish brown colour in the Zoeva Nude Spectrum palette, mine's a little bit dirty. So I'm actually going to take that and pop that almost in the same area as the one before, just really helping to deepen this autumnal colour. So I'm really focusing this shade in the crease and then also along I'd say three quarters of my eyelid too. And then of course blending, this is really satisfying, it's really when you can see the eye makeup look coming together. If the sun goes away you might actually be able to see what this looks like. Um, but before I finish, so I really don't spend too long on my eyeshadow because I'm not some makeup artist that can make it look amazing so I don't waste too much energy on it but I am going to put a little bit of this lighter colour just underneath the brow bone and I feel like this always really finishes it off really beautifully. So again, Zoeva brush, just popping that under the brow bone, almost neatening off the edges with this lighter colour. And that is pretty much all I do for the eyeshadow and I've been really mixing around with the colours from these two palettes to create my everyday autumn eyeshadow look. If I want to add a pop of sparkle, I have recently just been so obsessed with this Tom Ford palette. This shade in particular at the top is just a beautiful brownie, almost purpley pinky shimmer. So I'm just going to show you what this looks like, just adding a pop of that in the middle of the eyelid. It's a really beautiful, very luxurious shimmer. So sometimes I would maybe add this step in the evening if I just want to finish the look and add a little bit more sparkle. Next moving on to eyeliner and recently I've been loving the Guerlain eyeliner. This one just has the most beautiful packaging. I think this pot is absolutely gorgeous. I'm always really conscious to wipe away a lot of the excess though because it can be a little bit blotchy. And then just aiming to create a really thin line as close as possible to my lash line. <gasps> oh no! Be right back, need a cotton pad. When you do that, or if you do that, I find the best thing to do is run and get a cotton bud and then pop it in your mouth, wet it, and quickly just wipe away the area where you put your eyeliner. And then what I'm gonna do is repeat the final step from my eyeshadow. So just that last step, blending it all in to get rid of any gray smudges. 
So now I'm going to move on to mascara and first I'm going to use my trusty Tweezerman eyelash curlers just to gently curl the lashes and I find this really helps to just open my eyes a little bit more. And then I'm going to use my Tarte Tartiest Mascara. This is a very black shade, which I don't usually go for. I usually am a brown mascara person, but this one's really nice at creating long separated out lashes. I normally like to do my blush after my first layer of mascara sets because I find that the second coat of mascara goes on a lot better if you've given your first layer a chance to dry and I'm actually going to try this intense pink colour from the Tom Ford palette and I'm going to go very carefully because I feel like it's going to be very pigmented, this is my first time trying it and I'm using my, I think this is Sigma, Sigma Duo Fibre Powder Blush I'm just applying that to the apples of my cheeks and up to my hairline It's actually a lot softer than I was expecting, so I can go in a little bit harder the next time. And then on my lips I'm going to put the Seat Magic Pouch Potion, and this is a really mattifying um, lip treatment, so it'll mattify out the lip balm that I put on earlier, so really good for um, a long-lasting and also volumizing lip finish. The consistency reminds me of when I used to put like Blistex lip treatment on when I had really really dry lips, so very strange consistency. I apply it with the applicator and then just pat it in. It says it's voluminizing, but I don't really notice too much of a difference with my lips volume, but I do find it a really lovely finish, especially when I've put lip balm on before, it really acts as a primer, giving my lipstick the best chance it can have at lasting a long time. And I'm going to use two lip products to get the colour that I really, really like. First of all, this brand, I think I must have got it in a glossy box or something, so I'm not very familiar with it, but I really like the colour. It's Diego Dalla Palma, um, and I just absolutely love this formula and this colour. So it's a matte lip cream, and I'm just going to apply this straight onto my lips. So as you can see that just applied so so easily, this applicator is really good because it's got a point at the tip which means you can really precisely draw in your lip colour. It's also a really good intense colour so you only need one coat and it completely fills your lips with this colour. To be honest I love this colour so much, I wear it on its own a lot but because I want to make this look a little bit more autumnal I'm going to use one of my Armani uh, Second Skin Intense Matte Lip Colours. And this one is slightly purpley, and I don't love it on its own, but laid on top of a pink, I think it is such a gorgeous shade. Once again, a really lovely doe foot applicator, and I really, really like the packaging of this. I think it's so beautiful. I'm not going to apply too much, just tapping it on to just bring down the tone of the pink on my lips at the moment. So there we go, that is my lips done. I absolutely love this combination. I have been reaching for it so, so often on days when I want to just look a little bit more polished. I find that the Giorgio Armani is such a lovely matte color. On its own, as I said, not for me, but over the top of a pink, I think it's such a lovely way of bringing my pinks down a notch and making them a little bit more subtle um, and just such a gorgeous autumnal shade. A little bit purple or as purple as I'm willing to go. So big, big fan of that combination. But before we finish, I have a few more finishing touches. So I want to make my lashes more voluminous, so I'm going in with the Estee Lauder Sumptuous Knockout Mascara. This one again has a really stiff brush, so it's good for combing through, so really good for second application because it doesn't allow your mascara to get clunky, but it still adds in the volume. And then I'm going to use the Ico Brow Gel just to finalise my brows in case they become dislodged at any point during the process. And I like to have combed through brows, I don't like them to be patchy or anything. So I find that by doing this last, it just ensures my brows are um, perfect before I finish the look. 
This has got a really soft wand as well, which is why I use this one as my final brow product, because I find that it doesn't upset what I've done before, but it still just gently and softly combs through them and makes them all perfected. And last but not least, I'm using no less than two makeup sprays, which I know is quite excessive, but I am a big fan of makeup sprays. And the reason why I'm doing two is because uh, the Giorgio Armani Armani Prima, this is a refreshing spray. So I find that if my makeup has become a little bit tired or I just want to pep it up a little bit, I use this one. And then my Ren one is a anti-pollution mist. And because I live in the city, I'm really conscious of pollution going into my skin. So I find that by using the anti-pollution mist, it gives my skin the UV protection that it needs for a day in the city. So I just do a couple of spritzes of each and then I'm done. So that is my finished kind of everyday but slightly more glam than everyday autumn makeup look. I really hope you guys enjoyed getting ready with me and all that's left to do now is sort out my bad hair day and that's it from me. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always the links to all these products will be down below in the description box and also on the shop page on my blog. So all of my favourite beauty products are in the beauty section of the Fashion Mumbler shop so once again that will be linked down below too. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up because that really makes me happy and helps me out with the videos, so please do give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more from me, I do fashion, beauty, travel, lifestyle vlogs, then please hit the subscribe button as well because that would be amazing if you would subscribe. And in that case, I'll see you very, very soon. Thanks for watching and goodbye.